And I remember there was one guy, a very prominent rock photographer, who always referred to me as that little shit. When I started taking pictures, uh, I studied the market and I came to the realization that I wasn't going to be able to finance my increasingly lavish lifestyle. You know, I wanted to have a car and I wanted to hang out and I wanted to get my own apartment and I couldn't do this just by selling a picture to, to Cream Magazine for $25 or to Rock Scene Magazine for five bucks. There was a rumor, somebody said, oh, well, you know, there's there's a lot of money in Europe and there's money in Japan, so I'd go down to the newsstand and try and find European magazines. What I didn't realize was that there was only a handful, tiny, tiny handful of other photographers who were really aware of these foreign magazines. So instead of printing up one picture of Bob Dylan, I started making six of them or eight of them. I want to milk these pictures. I want them to be around the world. Now I was shotgunning them out. And then they started to buy my pictures. The Japanese just jumped on it. And if it was a picture of Robert Plant kicking a soccer ball, or if it was Dylan, or if it was the Ramones, or the Bay City Rollers, when they came to LA and I took pictures, I sent them to the Japanese, and they did pages and pages and pages. I started to make money doing this. And I remember I got a check from the Japanese one time, and it was something like $8,000. And I went with my dad to deposit the bank, and he's like, well, maybe you have something here. It was wild, and it was such a great feeling because nobody had helped me. My parents didn't help me. Nobody helped me. It was all done on my own. And when you do this, and you, you work hard, and you get your first camera, you get your first car, it's a sensational feeling. David Bowie was an incredibly charismatic figure. Bowie was a very smart guy, his management team was incredibly brilliant also. Anyone who photographed him even on stage was all controlled. And the, a candid picture, it was just, it was unheard of. My friend Michelle Meyer, who was the queen bee of the Sunset Strip, called me one day and she said, David Bowie is recording at Cherokee Recording Studios on Fairfax, he's been there all week. He arrives at night at 11 o'clock at night and he leaves at 6 o'clock in the morning. She said, go there and get a picture. So I thought, wow, that's pretty cool, a picture of David Bowie. And as soon as the sun started to come up on Fairfax, I was there. I had this camera, my brother's camera, this actual camera. Bowie comes out. I said hello to him, and he, all he said to me was good morning. But I just clicked. I clicked maybe six pictures of him. There's an incredible elegance to the pictures. It's almost like he was styled, but he wasn't. This is just him. This is Bowie in 75. He's wearing a cap. He's got a cigarette hanging out of the side of his face. He's holding some the tapes for his recording, the masters. I couldn't have asked for a better picture because I was such a precocious kid. I, I was able to, to get away with it. So I sent it to Cream. They're like, yeah, this is great. And all these PR people said, wow, man, it's so cool. You got, you photographed David Bowie and how'd you get these pictures? And we saw it in Cream Magazine. And after that, the, my invitations intensified. My, my timing was really perfect because I came on the scene like in 75 and um, I had all these great acts to photograph and had all this great fun. But then I just kind of felt like the party was coming to an end in like in the early 80s. For me personally, it's really been an interesting experience all these decades being in the photo business. It's been fascinating because I've seen, you know, the birth of syndication and, and all this money to be made from magazines overseas and certain celebrities being red hot and so on. And then also I've seen how it just vanished. Music life is gone, kaput, rock show is gone, poster magazine is gone. All these magazines I worked for in Europe, almost all of them except for Bravo magazine in, in Munich are gone. And you gotta understand, back then imagery was very scarce and it was rare. A picture of Dylan was like gold. Now there's just so much of it out there. So it's been interesting for me to see the whole evolution of the photo business. And it'll never come back. It'll never come back. And the reason is, is you know, people don't buy magazines. <laughs>